So this is my first official attempt at mermaid. Normally you get a prompt to have one every day of the, or draw one every day of the month, but I really don't think my schedule and my ability to um, sketch in a more looser, I don't know, freeing fashion will allow me to do it that many times. So I found a prompt, or I didn't actually, uh, my sister sent me a prompt through Instagram. And the prompt was actually by somebody called Black Fury Art. You can find her on Instagram. And she has put her mermaid prompts up and there's only seven of them, which I think I can cope with. I might reduce it down to four, I don't know yet, just so I have one a week. But if time allows, then I may get a couple done if I'm lucky during the week. Um, but yeah, I decided to give it a go because I am at the minute trying to sort of find where I sit within my illustration style. I think I have one, but I've never really settled on it. So I'm sort of using this as a bit of a challenge to see if I can indeed settle on something. <laughs> the character I decided to go for is um, from the prompt villain. And I knew that she needed to have a backstory. So when I have finished a yabbering, I shall be reading out a story that I have written to go with this character. And it gives you a bit of an idea of how she became who she is now and you know hopefully you'll stick with it it's quite a nice little story i think and i'm hoping that each time i do one of these prompts that i can do a story to go with it fingers crossed so i used my normal spectrum noir tools i used my illustrators and my classics um, and i did use some pencils near the end just to really try and give me some depth and then i used my uniball pen to create the highlights on top and overall i'm really really happy with how she came out i was really nervous because i haven't done something this extensive um that hasn't really been one of those draw this in your style type projects and i'm really pleased with the pre -sketch. i did the pre-sketch on the sofa at like midnight last night which is why it's not been recorded but i sort of went on to pinterest got some pictures got some pose ideas and um just sort of came up with this character and then the story sort of came from the character itself so overall i'm really really happy i do hope you enjoy the rest of the video and please let me know if you did give me a thumbs up and comment below what you thought of the story and if you did like it then you know I will definitely do some more going forward but it'd be really really interesting to get your feedback um yeah so get grab a cup of tea get your feet up grab a coffee a juice whatever you feel like drinking maybe a glass of sneaky wine and yeah sit back and enjoy the story of my villain Mavea. the rise of Mavea. In the greatest depths of the ocean, in the coldest, darkest valley that none ever dared speak of, a beautiful mermaid that captured the heart of many men slumbered. Not a single drop of light nor sound could be seen or heard in this lonely prison that Mavea was destined to occupy for years to come. Mavea was once a beautiful princess and daughter of King Hakata. He ruled over the most powerful and prosperous city of Serene. She was due to be wedded at the king's command to strengthen the alliance between Serene and the kingdom that stood upon the giant earth mound that rose above the worlds of the sea. King Hakata could never understand how these beings that walked round on two long stalks of flesh could survive in such an arid and dusty environment, having their flesh burn under the sun day after day. The gods rarely made it rain above the oceans. The fleshwalkers never felt the need to appease the gods. In return, it meant they never got relief from the heat. The alliance, however, would mean that the oceans and its dwellers would be protected from harm. Fleshwalkers often took it upon themselves to throw large nets and traps to capture our beloved creatures and merfolk. With the great kingdom on the earth mound, bound by the alliance of marriage, they were sure to stop their savage ways. The ocean dwellers were in contrast true believers in the balance and were always vigilant in ensuring their gods were appeased and got their sacrifices every month on the day of the blood moon. The glow of the blood moon made the oceans red and increased the magical lipril that filled the seas. The lipril in turn produced magic that filled the cities and helped the merfolk keep the balance of the oceans in perfect harmony. It was one of these blood moons that Mavea met her fate, the fate that would change her forever. 
The fate was dealt by the hands of her king, her father no less. The sadness in her eyes filled her father with guilt, but the law was the law and he had to fulfil his duty as king. He was punishing her for falling in love. Her love was deep felt, but nonetheless she was already promised to another. Her father had discovered that while the city was preparing its offerings to Poseidon, Mavea was preparing for a different type of sacrifice. The man she had fallen in love with was from the next city across the Rift Valley. This love was forbidden because of a feud that even over 200 years later had still separated the two largest cities of the ocean. This was never going to stop Mavea from breaking her royal oath that none could marry from either city. This would be her undoing. When King Hagata got word about their secret affair, it filled him with rage like he had never felt before. His anger and stubbornness to stay within the law would force the hands of the Princess Mavea, his once beautiful daughter. King Hakata could not see past the pain Mavea had caused him and without a second thought, he condemned her to a life in the dark. She was never to rise from the deepest, darkest, coldest part of the ocean until she had realised her lust for a forbidden love was never going to happen. What the king had failed to remember were the old tales of Lipwell Manor. Lipwell Manor were concentrated pockets of magic that come each blood moon and would triple in numbers and power. For each blood moon that passed, Mavea became stronger and more powerful. She practised with each torturous day that passed to control Lipril and use it against her father. She didn't care that each time she practised her magic she would slowly become one with the ocean and the coral that grew there. For every spell she whispered from her beautiful untouched lips, each of her scales would dissolve into dust and her flesh would harden into coral. Despite knowing that she may never actually be able to leave, should she continue to practice her magic, she was not prepared to let her father control her future. The day finally came. She was prepared and ready to face the king. Gathering her strength for the long journey ahead, Mavea called upon the only two other creatures to occupy the same space as her. If Farah and her Cora had become her loyal and loved companions, and after what felt like a lifetime of reaching and swimming up, she could feel the change in the water. She was getting closer. It was getting warmer, brighter, and somehow it felt lighter on her hardening skin. It felt freeing. She knew she was getting closer. As she approached the city boundary, something didn't quite feel right. It was quiet. Where were the folk? The ocean dwellers? The aquatic creatures? Not just the city, but the entire ocean seemed to be empty. The more she explored, the more she realised they had all gone. The ocean appeared to be deserted with nothing left, so she ascended to the top. As she neared the top, her feeling of dread increased. Where it used to shimmer with breaking light and a warmth only known to those who dared to break through the surface into the dry air above, she was right to be fearful and unsure. The trouble was, time had passed differently in the ocean depth. When Lipra was so concentrated, each day that passed for her was in fact years for those who lived above the depths of her prison. In the months that she had been learning and scheming, the dry world above had gone from being a harmonious balance and slow paced land to a concrete, overgrown, polluted chaos. As a result, the flesh walkers greed, Mavea's beloved ocean had become a mass of floating plastic and rubbish. She had never seen such objects before and was confused by how her now ancestors could have let such a thing happen. Being the only one now left of her kind, her rage began to bubble to the surface. With nowhere to go, she let out a scream so loud that the oceans ebbed with such ferocity that they slammed back to the dry land, flooding many of the concrete cities. She swam with speed back to the ruins of her once beautiful city, heading to the throne room which now looked as dark and as ruined as her soul. Mavea was never one for riches and found a peaceful solace in her broken home. The flesh walkers going about their lives had no idea of the horrors that they were soon to face. The reminders and lessons they will learn about their lack of respect for balance and nature 
was about to be forced upon them. Mavea was ready, ready to cause chaos.